Hey, this is Tommy at Alderman Farms. It's day 24 of the countdown to bees. And we got bees today. Um, started out, I noticed a couple earlier today, messing around the swarm trap and also messing around the hive, uh, which we are just using as a second swarm trap. And later this afternoon, it is now three o'clock central time. Um, I've counted as many as 10, I think, that are uh, there's been three or four at one time inside the hive and there's been as many as 10 I think or so uh, inside the swarm trap inside of Epstein which didn't hang itself and it's like every time the bees leave the swarm trap and they come back and bring more which I know is like the normal thing they go back to wherever they're coming from do their little waggle dance tell them they think they found some new digs and come back with more. So keep you posted on that, but I thought it would be a good time to show you around our bee meadow. We're trying to build a bee sanctuary here at Alderman Farms. So let's take just a little look around. How about it? Before we do that, I'll show you what I've been watching this afternoon. There's one bee that went in there just now. There's fixing to be a second one going there. Oh, yep. There, oh, there was already two in there at least. So they're going in there. So we're having a good bit of activity around the hive right now. This is so exciting, y'all. It has been killing me. I've been out here every day watching for bees. And up at Epstein, the swarm trap that didn't hang itself. Um, you can see that little bee coming out the entrance there. Like I said, there's been as many as 10 up there, I think, at one time. So I don't know if they're comparing notes. <laughs> on the uh, which is best and they'll go back and um, have a vote i'm not sure quite how that works but anyway let's look around the bee meadow shall we i'm not sure how clear it comes in but all the white you see is white clover we're letting our thistle grow because thistle is an, a very important early uh, pollen source for all pollinators, not just bumble, not just honeybees, and the bumblebees love the thistle. And there is a little patch of ground right there that we uh, that I tilled up for uh, to plant some perennial wildflowers. Here's another one, and it's right now it's uh, growing a dog apparently, but we've got some perennial wildflowers planted here as well. It's directly, I say directly, it's kind of across from the other one. We've got some three crab apple trees planted out here. Only one of them is showing some growth. Got a couple of pecan trees. And that bed you're looking at, there's a curved bed, pretty long bed, I didn't measure it, uh, that has nothing in it but black oil sunflower seeds. And they're kind of funneling attention toward uh, the initial hive area. There's some black oil sunflower seeds in that bucket, and I got one over here too. Uh, that, like I said, they're curved and they kind of act as a funnel to draw your attention toward the hives. Oh, I can't quit looking. There's so many bees over there and I just left. I have uh, broadcast some crimson clover. Need to get a good rain. Uh, we may get rain tonight. But I have broadcast some crimson clover all out in this meadow in the areas where you don't see any white clover. Um, about two pounds of seed, I think. I love these little yellow flowers. I'm probably supposed to know what they are, but I don't. Somebody's gonna tell me, I'm sure, what they are. Uh, but they are so bright, and they almost look like they're, they're covered with wax. Well, what is that, morning glories going out here, I guess? This vine right here. I don't know if that's morning glory or not. So, we also have a, oh, look at the blackberries over there. Let me show you that. If I don't step on a snake. Just white clover everywhere and it's good and deep. And uh, we let the goats come out here every so often. There's plenty for them to share with the bees and other pollinators. Have you ever seen the like of blackberries in your life? We didn't plant these either. 
they are natural native blackberries just absolutely loaded and all the way on the other side too so this all this area of what we used to call the pasture now I'm calling the meadow um, has never really grown too much I guess I don't know it's just not very fertile I need to be working on that I'm happy to see a couple of little patches of clover out there clover for days y'all clover for days and we are broadcasting other uh, perennial wildflowers um, to have plenty of options for the honeybees and the bumblebees and the native bees and the flutterbys and uh, all sorts of pollinators giant thistles look at that big old huge thistle over there I mean it's like tall as me that one right there so anyway um, our bee meadow coincidentally is right next to the high tunnel honeybees will go into a high tunnel but sometimes they have trouble getting out bumblebees are excellent pollinators inside of a high tunnel so <clears throat> we've got fruit trees growing over here all of our fruit trees that we bought at the Lincoln County tree sale are budding looking great we've actually got some blackberries in a box right there that's the box is doesn't have any soil in it i actually put that there to keep from running over them with the tractor and the lawnmower uh, these boxes are going inside the high tunnel i've brought some dirt in there that i gotta till down and spread out a little further but we've got four blueberry bushes over on the side of the high tunnel over there that are loaded down uh, so the honeybees will love that and we i don't forgot what all these trees are apple trees uh, we got plum trees in the front of the high tunnel I actually came in we've got a walking path that goes uh, from the gate all the way down to where the beehives are but then I also mowed a path around the outside uh, of the meadow around the inside fence perimeter all the way from over there right by the barn right up along the fence to the gate right there where blue's standing and that's our morning and evening uh walking track uh, so we we come in we walk down the path in the middle to where the bees are take a peek at the bees and then we either turn right or left and go around the perimeter uh, and every time we get to the middle we walk up the middle and i think we discovered that that uh it's about 0.3 miles um going around each perimeter once and of course that puts you going through the middle section twice i think uh so <clears throat> i think we walked it three times this morning and it was kind of funny uh our our watches keeping track of our distance ended at one mile uh right at the gate where, where i showed you blue over there a minute ago and uh so we're going to try to do a mile every morning and evening in the midst of all the work, Patty is a slave driver. She is just busting my tail today. In fact, I got to go get on the lawnmower and then I got to move our old grape trellis over here. I got a mower in front of the high tunnel that I'm going to move the old grape trellis over here in front of the high tunnel because we've got muscadines uh, in pots that need to be planted bad because they are blooming out like crazy. So anyway, that's a look at our bee meadow, our pollinator meadow, here at the Bee Sanctuary at Alderman Farms. Thanks for watching. Give us a thumbs up uh, if you weren't bored to tears. If you're not subscribed, uh, give us a, subscri a subscription because we're fixing to be, I'm fixing to be talking about bees a lot, it looks like, because uh, I'm hopeful today, tomorrow, the next few days, we're going to have a swarm moving into one or both, <laughs> one or both of, the, uh, of Epstein and the LSU hive. So we'll see. Thanks for watching.